Hey guys, welcome back to Builder Funnel Radio. This is episode 97 with Tom Reber of The Contractor Fight. If you don't know Tom, uh, you probably haven't been on the internet uh, because he is everywhere and he's built a really amazing brand and runs some amazing programs to help contractors get more freedom in their lives and make more money. And today we cover the gamut in terms of topics. We talk about some marketing things. We talk about brand building and leadership. It's an awesome conversation, and I think you'll learn a lot from what Tom has to say. So enjoy episode 97 with Tom Reber. Hey, Tom, glad to have you back on the show. Good to be here, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, I was uh, actually just doing a little research before we hopped on, and it was episode seven the last time you were on, on the show. Are you so, kidding me? Yeah, this this one will be ninety seven. So very fitting. We we could have waited a hundred episodes, but we we waited ninety. So. Wow, man, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Congrats. very cool. That's a yeah, big thing. It's uh, it's a lot of work. You're gonna get you'll you'll hit a hundred here pretty soon, and that's a milestone. I guess when I started, uh, my podcast guy, my producer, told me that most don't get to ten. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so, there's some stat out there. So congratulations, man. Yeah. Well, I guess you took a big risk being number seven because you didn't even know if we were going to make it, you know, so. <laughs> well, I liked yeah. you. So it was like, cool. Hey, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> hey, let's do it. Yeah, I know. And we were so, uh, we were still figuring things out. I think you can hear a mower in the background because there was some guy going by. And so, <laughs> you know, this this will sound a little different, which is good. Well, I but. can't promise you won't hear a teenager running through here at some point or one of the three dogs mainly our attack chihuahua who's three <laughs> so <laughs> gotta watch out for those yeah <laughs> yeah well that's the world we live in today so it it's, it's all good yeah. well, what are you what are you hearing and, and seeing out there you know we're we're you know what 10 weeks couple two or three months into all this chaos and uh yeah you know what what are you seeing one of two things, man, I'm, I'm seeing, uh, cause you know, like your business, we get people filling out contact forms, wanting help and this and that in our questionnaire. And, um, the, the people that have been aggressively building their brand, marketing their business over the last couple of years, few years, honestly, they're crushing it right now. And their biggest problem is finding people. They're selling like crazy. They, their phone won't stop ringing. Uh, and the opposite is true too. The other side we're seeing is, guys that didn't take marketing seriously. Uh, they're the ones typing in these forms. I got to get my phone to ring. I have no work. I haven't sold a job in three months, you know, stuff like that. So it's just the things you've been preaching right forever is you just got to keep building that brand and establishing your expert authority. And, uh, and when you do, it pays off. It's, it's like compound interest, man. It re yeah, it really is. It's, it's interesting you say that because uh, I just recently learned this, but I guess in some circles, it's kind of a, a badge of honor to spend like zero or 1% on marketing. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't, hadn't heard that before. And I'm thinking, gosh, that, that's just bad information going around because of exactly what you pointed out. You know, if you've been relying on word of mouth referral and then all of a sudden people can't talk and you don't have a regular lead gen program, Right. That can disappear overnight, you know? So is, is that kind of what you're noticing? Basically the people that were working on marketing, they have that to lean on during this time. They do. And I, I, I don't know if it was you and I that talked about this on my show earlier this week, but it, it all depends on your goals, right? If you want to be the one man operation, you want to be a handyman or you just want to be a painter or whatever you do. And you just, you like working in the field and this and that you truly could get by with pretty much word of mouth. And, and those are the best leads. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We all For want sure. referral leads. So, so I'm, I'm, however, I see a lot of guys wear it as a badge of honor that my work speaks for itself, you know, and that whole thing. And that's just not how you're going to scale a business and get yourself out of a job and mm -hmm. this and that. So, you, you know, you know, back, back in the day, you know, we would get, uh, in one of my companies, we would get, for every hundred leads we'd get only 20 of them were like paid marketing stuff. All the others were referrals and influencers and past customers. And so, um, so I'm, I'm good with that, but you gotta have, you gotta have something, you know, every business has a cost per lead, whether it's money or your time. Right. So, um, so I, yeah. And that's, 
I don't know. My my take is I I want the I want to have a machine, man. That you know I have tons yes. of leads coming in. You got a great sales process to pre qualify. You can name your price, deliver a great experience, um, bring on the right customers. But that you can only sell boldly when you have enough leads. Yeah, yeah nailed it. And then it's predictable, right? Because then it gives you the confidence to make those hires or make those moves and investments. Otherwise, you're like, well, I don't know what's coming up in three months, so I don't know if I want to make any big moves. So right. I, I think this whole idea, you know, it kind of comes to, in my mind, like somewhat recession proofing your business and trying to do that in several areas. And we kind of talked on the marketing side, you know, having a regular program that generates leads helps you recession proof. Are there other things that can help recession proof a business, you know, in some other areas that you, that you think about. And I'm not saying we're in a recession, but I mean, we're 10 years at, at the end of a bull run and it was, it's like something was going to happen. Yeah. You know, we, um, you know, for me, the first thing that comes to mind is, is the whole, um, uh, um, make enough money, right? Like charge enough so that you can, you know, build up a war chest and not not be you know check to check all the time and i see so many contractors under charging for their work uh and they never have enough money left to do anything and so you know that's um you know they're robbing peter to pay paul they're you know they're going uh they're going into debt you know so debt debt will you know for sure you know crush you um you know so but but as, as far as um you know recession proofing you know if you want to get even higher level to me, it all starts with your leadership as a business and what kind of culture, you know, you're building and things like that. This is the way we do things. It all starts with the leader and kind of trickles down there. The rest of it's just math, you know? Um, yeah. So you know, what do you, what do you mean by that? I, I agree with you. Like the, there's the math component of making sure you're charging enough. You have cash in the bank. You, you yeah. know, you've got your leads and sales numbers working, but yeah. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that leadership piece. Well, we, you know, it's a mentality, you know, we, we did a sales coaching workshop for a company the other day and they said they're one of their biggest problems right now. And they're, they're growing and all this other stuff. One of their biggest problems is that their salespeople are not um, being aggressive enough um, with collecting money when somebody says, yeah, let's do it. Like, Mm. you know, just think about it for a minute. So to me, and what we got to, we kind of reverse engineered it. it. It was really the started at the top where a culture had been created that it's okay to, and, and when I say aggressive, I don't mean being an aggressive piece of crap sales guy. I'm talking about sure. being assertive and controlling what we can control. Um, and that just wasn't the vibe coming down from the top in the business. And, and so we, we have a thing here in the contractor fight where, you know, time kills deals. There's no better time than today to sell a job, to collect money, to make a change, to do whatever needs doing. And so that's what I mean by the leadership, that when you have that, that um, focus and that mindset as a leader, that's what trickles down and, and can actually help, re, you know, at least make your business a little more recession proof. You know, things like the leader really sets the course for saying, we're going to build our brand. I mean, what we talked about a minute ago. And and that doesn't mean you have to personally do all the marketing. That doesn't mean you have to understand it all. It just means you got to be the champion of it. Like guys, we're going to build our brand. Um, we're going to raise our gross profit. We're, we're going to um, uh, carry a light pack is what we talk about in our world here. Meaning there is no overhead allowed unless it's essential for the journey. And that should be even, even in a good economy, yeah. you know? And so, um, you know, those are what I'm talking about. And that sort of leadership and that focus and that drive, um, you know, trickles down because that's just, that's what develops your culture. Then this is what, this is how we roll here. And so I, I just think strong leadership is where everything starts. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And as you were talking, I know you kind of used the word aggressive and you didn't mean it in a negative sense. The, the word that triggered in my mind was just urgency in all those areas. Yeah. So you're saying, Hey, like we've got to make sales today. We've got to you know, hire the right people today. We've got to make sure we're selling at the right margins today, you know, but everything, everything's today, you know, so I, yeah, I like that. It's uh, what is it? Patient urgency, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, like building your brand. I know I keep going back to this because it's, it's the easy one to describe, but it's like, we're, 
building a brand takes time and patience and, you know, content and inbound, you know, I mean, some of these things, it's a, it's a journey. You know, we were talking about that before. Um, but it doesn't mean I can't be urgent about the things that need to be done today in order to do that for the long game. And, yeah. um, and that's, you know, I think, um, we get complacent. It's natural to get complacent, especially guys that sell big jobs. I see that a lot. They sell a big job. They're like, Oh man, this job's going to pay for our overhead for the next three months. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and <laughs> then they take now. Their foot off the gas. <laughs> and so that, and that's the exact time when you should step on it or right now is the, as we're recording this, it's June of 2020, which is typically the busy season for most contractors. Yet, you know, this, to be true, because you've done this long enough, this is also the time when they take their foot off the marketing pedal because they're like, oh, I'm busy. When they don't understand, this is the time to gain more momentum and, um, and really, really step on it. So and that's my, one of my yeah. biggest pet peeves with contractors. They don't market when they're busy. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. And, and as you were saying that, I was just thinking about it. I'm going, you know what? we close, you know, our, our work, you know, people sign up to do marketing with us and it's almost always, you know, Q3 is pretty good. Q4 and Q1 are the heavy ones, you know, and, and to your point, it's cause in the summer and in the spring when they're selling, you know, trying to get work in the summer, it's, they're just too busy to, to think about marketing. Um, but to your point, you know, that's when you really got to step on it. Same thing with us in, in the fight, man, our, our phone and contact forms are, blowing up in the winter yeah right like it's those winter months man those those yeah. end of q4 and q1 it's like and i remember when i, you know, I was a painting contractor i end of uh it's usually by february of every year um and i was in the chicago area for most of those years by february i was looking for a, a bridge high enough to jump off of like as a contractor like it was just you know you can't be outside um you know, and we, we did hundreds of jobs a year and stuff, but February was for me, was always that, uh, that literally in every way, dark month. And, um, you know, so we got wise after a few years and, and we started like selling work and trying to book it in February. So at least we'd keep our mind off. Yeah. Stuff. We, <laughs> you know, anyway, that's, uh, yeah, you gotta be aggressive, man. That's, that's it. Yeah. So I can imagine, you know, some people listening to this right now and going, okay, maybe, maybe they're busy. They're in the busy category. So like, I've got work, I'm booked out for a few months, you know, uh, okay, you're saying I should get aggressive and start, you know, continuing to keep my foot on the gas, invest in marketing, but maybe they're worried about they don't have the team to deliver or they have to turn people away or, you know, hey, we can't start your job for six months, you know, so what's a good mindset to approach those kind of challenges with? Cause it can feel a little bit like scary. You're going to the next level, right? You're pushing ahead. How do you, how do you navigate that? Well, the first thing that comes out of my mouth when I hear that is, well, which pain would you rather have? <laughs> would you rather have the pain of being slow later on and be in the same spot you are now as a business year in and year out, you know, like you have these spikes and the, these peaks and valleys and things like that. Or do you really want to, take it to the, and both are painful, right? In, in one degree or another. So, um, you know, somebody's, I, and I hear that they're like, well, I don't want to have too many leads. I'm like, dude, you yeah. can never have too many leads. <laughs> if you feel like you have too many leads and you're overwhelmed, then you have a process issue, you know, or it's the way you're pre-qualifying or, you know, intake or what, you know, whatever it is, it could be a tech, it could be an automation issue that you could solve easily or, you know, a sales process thing. But, um, and the, the other thing with, finding people too. Well, I don't have enough guys to produce it. Again, to me, it comes back to the, the original contact with that prospect. And you just have an own, this is part of the sales training part and ex setting expectations. And like, Hey, Spencer, if I, if I told you that we were, we were booked out eight weeks, would that be a deal breaker? You know? Yeah. Um, and sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. If you have the right spirit of the conversation, if you have the right, um, you know, transparency with people and, you know, if you have a good brand, they'll wait for you. Like it's, and, and I, the other thing here is we have a labor shortage and I personally think that two things 
will help move the labor shortage in the right direction. Number one is contractors need to start making more money so they can pay more money, right? Um, there's no reason that there should be anyone who's like struggling financially in the trades with the demand and what we can do and things like that. Second thing is I think the, I think the, um, if you're a company listening to this right now and you're having a hard time finding people, I actually think it can come back to the way you build your brand. You know, when you build your brand, eyeballs are on you. When you create, I talked about leadership. When you create the right culture, your people are going to be happy and alive. And they're going to, you know, and all these things build your brand. And, and those are attractive to other people that are looking, you know, that yes. are out there. Um, I've seen it over and over. It was my own company years ago. And I've seen it over and over and over. Like guys will be in a, in the store, you know, at their vendors getting something, they'll have their shirt on and another guy from another company go, Hey, you guys hiring. I've heard good things about you. And that happens when you build your brand. And that's why I'm always pushing, you know, we got these things called smartphones, right? And you just kind of flip them around in selfie mode and take pictures and you do, you know, introduce us to your team and, you know, just be consistent and, 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 um, being your own biggest fan. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way, but like you should be your own biggest fan. You should be proud of sharing your business three to four to five times a day on social media. And when you do that over and over, um, you know, builds the brand. And, and so that whole thing about, I don't want to market too much because I can't handle the work. Listen, raise your prices. If you have that many leads coming in, then yeah, good jack point. your prices up. Again, deliver a great experience. What, and it's funny, Spencer, when I go, jack your prices up and you should make as much as you can. People, <laughs> A lot of people go, oh, you got to be fair to your customers. You're just ripping people off. And that, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. They have every opportunity to say no to me at whatever my price is. And as long as I'm delivering amazing value to somebody and they're willing to pay the price, it's fair. It's that simple. So It's and true. And, and oftentimes the people that, that pay more, they're going to be happier because they value it more. You know, it's just like anytime you get something for free, you don't value it yeah. as much, but if you have to pay for it, you do. So yeah, that's a really good, really good point. And I feel like part of raising prices too, is you're, you're testing the market to see where, like, where is the sensitivity? You know, can I raise it 10% and still be fine? Great. Then maybe I'll learn something about the competitive landscape, you know, out there as well. Well, it's, it's funny in our programs, when we look at guys who are making the most money, profit and and there's kind of a few things here it's not just about making money it's about being happy right and having you know your time back and things like that but those that are making the most money and are the most fulfilled in our programs do you know their closing rates are only like 15 to 20 percent because they have they have enough lead flow coming in because they built their brand um they really understand the client's motive they're going to deliver that they're generally 30, 50, a hundred percent more than all the other bids, but they get hired by the right people. And that's the key that. is being hired by the right people. So, Man, um, that's another badge, you know, a closing yeah. rate. Oh, I close half or I close 60. Well, maybe that's actually not a good thing in, in mm -hmm. this example. Well, I'm not supposed to say this cause you know, but, but in our programs, you'll often see people come in and their closing rate will drop, but it'll <laughs> drop, but the money they make will go up. The time they save will go, go up or their time spent will go down. Okay. Um, because it's a mindset thing. It's like, so anyway, it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we brag about the fact that, yeah, your closing rate goes down, but you're spending 40% less time in the estimating process. You are, your average job size is going up 15 to 20% because we teach you how to sell in a way that connects with the client and they're happy to pay your price. And so you're going to see that most people, are not a good fit for you when you really have your, your stuff on straight here in your business. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't, you don't want every client that comes mm -hmm. your way or every prospect you want the right ones that are going to pay what you should be charging. <laughs> I, you know, I did an experiment met this over 10 years ago, tracked our, I've always tracked leads and stuff fanatically. And um, one whole year I, I tracked what, is my closing rate and profit on jobs, gross profit on jobs when we discounted. Mm. And, um, and our closing rate when we discount, if I just took, you know, the couple hundred leads that year that we 
discounted on. It could have been 50 bucks, 10%, doesn't matter. That group, that closing rate was much less than the non-discounted ones, which is funny. And then when we ran gross profit on those compared to the other, it was like 10% less because those people were fussier. They were a pain in the ass, you know, whatever. Yeah. And you know, they had a discount. And they had a discount, <laughs> right. So that's when I was like, forget it, you know, forget it. That's pretty eye-opening though. Yeah. I mean, gosh, yeah. And, and I think it does really make the case for, hey, generate as many leads as you can because then you can get more picky and more choosy. You know, when you only have a handful, you kind of need to take them all because you're like, I just need the revenue. And so, yeah, it all comes back there, to that. that there's, a, there's a phrase we use a lot and it's market like your next meal depends on it and sell like you're independently wealthy. You know, and you can't sell like you're independently wealthy if you don't have good lead flow, because then you get all puckered up and afraid, like, oh, like Tommy Boy, right? I don't want to lose a little <laughs> sale or whatever yeah. that scene was, right? So, yeah. you know, because we, I've done it. You've probably done it. Like, if your phone isn't ringing and then it rings, it's like you're the, you're the psycho, you know, girlfriend that won't let go or something. You know what I mean? You're like <laughs> hanging on to that thing and it's dragging it through life for the next 18 weeks as you're following up and they're ghosting you. And oh, you know, man. so it's yeah. just uh um so true. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're the experts, we're the professionals. We know what we're doing. We're going into houses, we're building stuff, we're fixing stuff, we're doing whatever we do. Uh and we and it and you need to act like it. You need to, you know, go in there with the com they called you. So you should do the bidding and the job and the scheduling and all those things um, pretty much on your terms, the way you feel the project needs to be done and not be bullied by, by customers and stuff like that. And it's much easier to do that when your phone's ringing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so for people listening, maybe let's get a little tactical. You talked a lot about building the brand and kind of the urgency behind doing these things, whether it's good times, bad times, doesn't matter. If people haven't really been working on that too much over the last couple of years, what are some good moves to be making right now? On, on brand building? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you got to, you got to know who you want to be and who you are as a company. You know, we, we always talk about, we call them NNVs our non, non-negotiable values. What are we going to stand for here? And it's really hard to build a brand and a culture that supports where you want to go when we're not consistent as the leader of really, what, what do they say? Culture is, is what's expected and then tolerated. It's kind of the yeah. intersection of those things. Yeah. And so a lot of us are like, um, you know, we value, one of our values is that we respect people. But if you're never, if it's just hanging on the wall or in the employee binder and you never talk about it, it's going to be hard to build a brand that supports those values. And so uh, tactically, what that would look like, what we do in our, in, in the contractor fight with my team um, is, you know, we have a number of values that we hold, you know, very sacred. One of them is positive people only. Uh, another is um, we play the long game. Okay. And things like that. Um and so, um, you know, another one is go for it, meaning my team doesn't have to wait for me to make a decision. Nobody in my company does. If they feel this is the best thing for the client, the best thing for the, the brand, they 100% can pull the trigger on anything they want to do. I and like so, that. Yeah. So we start our weekly meeting. So you need to have a weekly meeting. And it could be as simple as going the first 30 seconds of the meeting that everybody's there, you just go around the table or the computer screen or whatever it is, the Zoom call, and everybody's got to share 30 seconds of how they lived out one of our values in the last seven days since our last meeting. And it might be, um, this is a real life example. My assistant one time, she was like, you know, um, I know we play the long game here. And this guy was being a real dick on our Facebook page. And he was stirring some things up and I needed to deal with it. And and I at first just wanted to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And instead, I'm like, let's just play the long game. Let me try to understand where he's coming from. So she private messaged him. Turns out he had a lot of personal crap going on in his life. He was having a bad day. So it's just those things that, that protect your values. And then over time, 
those are the types of things that the world sees that you stand for as a company. So tactically, I think you got to have a meeting every week. First, you got to have your values. You got to know what you stand for. But then you got to, you as the leader, you got to enforce and not tolerate, you know, when we're not living those things out. Yeah. Um, building, building brand, I think is, is, uh, you know, you know, this doing what you do. It's about positioning yourself as the experts in your industry. Um, so tactically for, for us, um, our vision is that anytime somebody types the word contractor or construction in any device, any platform, any whatever, the contractor fight comes up, right? And as, as the world's best educator for contractors. So our goal is to be the best educator. And we could, we could do that free. You could pay us. But the bottom line is, is we're very committed to being the best educators and with that, tactically, it's, you know, we have a content plan that we work out and X amount of posts per day and per week. And, um, you know, and, and that and being consistent on those things, that's the, um, you know, that's the hardest thing because you're yeah, managing your client work and you're doing all this other stuff. So, again, tactically, we've created programs where I'm actually allowed the majority of my time is actually spent creating content and not coaching because that time that I spend creating content is actually of more value in the big picture of being the world's best educator. So, yes. no, yeah. I, I, well, a couple of things in there. I love that when I asked you a brand question, you didn't just jump into, well, post X times to social media or you started with core values and what you're doing internally, because if you haven't figured that out, it's hard to project that externally. Um, so yeah, I think that's huge for anybody yeah. listening. You know, we've talked about core values in the past on, on Builder Funnel Radio, but that really kind of anchors your brand and your culture and all those things that kind of tie together. And then people start to see it. And like you said earlier, that can be a huge piece of attracting the right talent because then you start to pull people in that resonate with those core values and they're so bought in and they want, they want to jump on board with the team. hundred percent. You know, the, and you just said it, I'll just say it a different way. We go, I want to build my brand, but if you don't know what your brand is going to stand for, you know, like Apple, what do, what do they stand for? If we've all seen the Simon Sinek thing on Know Your Why or Start With Why or whatever, right? Yeah. And like, you know, because we think differently, <laughs> okay, we attract these types of people or whatever the whole, it's been a while since I've seen it. But that's, yeah. you know, that's one of the biggest things about the Apple brand is, what was that commercial where they uh, they showed all the people through history? Remember talk, we had... Um, yeah, what the, the ones that stir things up or what, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, they're like the instigators and the, yeah. you know, the, the creatives and yeah. And not just for the sake of instigating things and causing problems, but because yeah. they believe in thinking differently, that's going to advance the world or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the clarity that I think we all have to have. You know, so if you're a, if you're a remodeling contractor or something, you're listening to this, you take some time, just go, what do I want when people see our truck, hear our name, what are some words that we want to come want coming to mind? And that's where you start with going, okay, how do we intentionally build our brand in that direction? Yeah. Yeah. And the other piece of it that you, you mentioned, I think is awesome because you said you're, you know, you've gotten to a point where you're saying, Hey, I need to be spending almost all of my time creating content, basically essentially brand building. And so you've removed yourself from the operation. And I think, that is a really good target for contractors that are listening to this thinking, how can I be actually just spending all of my time building the brand and attracting people to us and then putting those things in place to, to sell and deliver the actual work. And if you think about it, as you said that I was thinking, okay, what does this actually look like at the local level? And, and if we just rewind, you know, 10 or 15 years, think about the, the couple of TV commercials or the couple of radio commercials that you heard over and over and over again, like here, there's like a, a jewelry one. And I think maybe like the Tom Shane one is all over the country or whatever. And so, but you think about those couple within your local community, 
what they've done is said, I'm going to put my face out there. And that's a more traditional branding. But if you think about where they're spending their time, they're saying, hey, I'm here, I'm connecting my personality, our culture, our company to our audience. And so that more people are aware. And, and today you can obviously use vehicles that are through social channels versus just TV channels. And, and it does require a lot of time to do that. <laughs> it is, but I, I tell you, it's, um, it, it pays off. And that's the, again, back to the patient urgency, you know, it pays off. I, I mean, I've got, um, I have a handful of, there's, there's three clients I'm thinking of right now that I've worked with for several years now. And the first thing we started doing with each one of them was we got intentional about building their brand. Okay. Um, two of the three right now, um, have, um, for personal and business. So their personal life and their business, they have, um, they have enough money to go a full year without bringing in another dollar in the business of revenue. Like it, they could just take the next year off and pay all their overhead, pay all their personal stuff, their bank and money, their this and that, their phone is just blowing up off the hook. And it all started with, with the brand. And so I, when people are like, well, I don't have the time for this. I don't have the money for this or whatever. I think to myself, this is what I do for me. I go, Okay, I have this vision of my future self, my future business. So what does that future self and business require of me today? What will I look back 18 months from now, three years from now, and wish I would have done? And that's what we're talking about here. That's why those companies are in those positions is because they're, they, they always keep that vision of where they're going and how they're going to feel if they look back and the shit hits the fan in the economy and you know, what, you know, like you have another 2008 housing crisis or whatever. And that, that sunk a lot of businesses. What are you going to wish you would have done? I remember during that, there were a lot of things I wish I would have done to prepare for it. Yeah. So sure. that's what I encourage people with. Don't, don't look at the time. Don't look at the money. It's an investment. This stuff pays off. Building brand is great. Uh, to me, it's, it's the one constant because you, you know, all the tactical things are going to come and go. I mean, yeah. Facebook could be gone in a year. Doubt yeah. it but it could be right. Yeah. And you know, but what is the, and that's why we do a marketing strategy with people. Um, we don't go to the tactics. We go, you know, what are you going to do? So one strategy might be, we, we want to be our area's best educators. Then you go, okay, what are the tactics that are going to help support that? It's going to be blogging and video, and it might be certain social media things or, you know, speaking or this and that. Another tactic to, to market or strategy to grow your business might be uh, we, uh, our strategy to grow our business and attract leads is to deliver the best experience possible to every client. Okay. Well, how do we do that? And then there's tactical things under that. And so we always think strategy first, then the tactic, because the tactics can be swapped in and out, but those strategies should really be who you're going to be, what you're going to stand for. Yeah. I love that. And I, and uh, when you were talking about envisioning your future uh, business and future self, um, my wife and I do that all the time and, and even with small things. So like say it's the end of the night and the dishes are still in the sink. We go, well, our future Spencer and future Rachel going to like us if we leave these, you know, so thinking about ourselves in the morning and, uh, <laughs> and so, but, but it works like from a business standpoint, like fast forwarding and go, am I going to really like past Spencer for not doing X, Y, and Z? Like, no, I'm going to be annoyed at him and I'm going to yeah. regret it. And so if you can pull yourself out, jump yourself forward and have that perspective, that can be the inertia that you need to get going. <laughs> think, think about working out. Just said to my girlfriend, I say it to her all the time. I'm like, never once in my life after a workout have I regretted it. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> However, when I've blown off the workout, I've always regretted it. And just take that, move it to your business and the things that you know you need to do. And, you know, it's going to be painful, right? There's the pain of the workout or there's the pain of being fat and diabetic. Okay. So it's like, pick one. You get to pick your pain. That's the wonderful thing here is that our success is a, is a total choice. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, I like that pick your pain, you know, cause it's going to be pain one way or the other. It might as well be the good kind. <laughs> you want the pain of being broke yeah. and stressed out and all that, or you want the pain of figuring out how you're going to pre-qualify all these leads and find more employees and produce the gobs and gobs of high profit work that you have to schedule. Like, I know which one I'll pick every day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom, that's awesome. Well, I got one last uh, section of the show for us coming up. But before we get to that, if people want to learn more about what you do and how you help and, and they want to get connected, what's the best way? Thecontractorfight.com. That's absolutely the best thing. Or just go to any social or whatever and type in contractor fight. But the website, you know, head there. We got gobs and gobs of free resources for people to help their businesses. And, um, you know, if you, if you want help, it's there, there's tons of stuff for free. Uh, if you want to move faster, then you can certainly jump into one of our programs and, you know, move a little quicker, but nonetheless, man, it's all there. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, it, it won't be hard to find guys just type that into Google and you'll see a, a ton of stuff pop up. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, Tom, we have one last section here. We call it the fast five. So I'll hit five rapid fire Uh-oh. questions. Yeah. Uh-oh. Say whatever comes top of mind. All right. <laughs> we'll start with an easy one. Uh, favorite business book and why? Favorite business book, Selling the Invisible. It's many, many years old, but that was kind of the foundation of me of helping me understand what marketing was really about. It was about the experience. Awesome. Cool. All right. Next question. Who's the most inspirational person in your life? God, <laughs> I think it changes. Um, it changes, man. You got me on this one. Most inspirational person in my life. Currently, it's my son Dakota, who's in Marine Corps boot camp right now. Awesome, very yep. cool. Graduates in a week. Oh, right on. Well, there you go. Congrats. Yep. Um, all right. If you could have one superpower, what would that be? Mind reading. <laughs> yeah, <a> good one <laughs> i'd own the world <laughs> yeah it wouldn't take long right <laughs> right all right describe yourself in three words oh, um driven passionate happy very good. And last question is, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would that be? Live unafraid. Go get, go get what you want. You know, we, too many times we think about, you know, all the reasons we shouldn't follow our gut and follow our heart and do the things we know to do. And, and uh, it holds a lot of us back. It held me back for many years. And, and I just find that um, when we just be ourselves and live without fear, um, you know, life is always much better. That's awesome. That's great advice. Well, Tom, this was awesome. Thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate you having me, man. Have an awesome weekend. Yeah, you too. All right. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Tom Reber and a couple of takeaways. I know you guys are on the go. You're at the gym, you're in the car driving around or in the truck. And a couple of things that really stood out to me was, uh, when we talked about brand, I really liked that he started talking about core values and internal and really needing to nail those things down. If you haven't taken the time, it was something that I really thought was kind of a, I don't know, a fluffy kind of topic, this like culture core values, like do you really need them as a part of a company? And, and several years ago when we went through that process to establish our own core values, it made a ton of difference. And really it does help, it helps internally with your culture and the way you run meetings and the way you do things. But then that does start to project and bleed out into your marketing, into your social media, into that brand that is external, uh, externally facing. And so I think that was a really powerful takeaway was, hey, as I start to build my brand over the next two, three, four, ten 10 years, I need to anchor them with something and it really starts with those core values. So I think that was the first one. Um, the second takeaway was really around um, kind of leadership and that sense of urgency in those different categories of your business. So having the urgency today, but being patient with that 
a longer term result that you're looking for. And I love that mentality. It's, hey, I'm, I'm doing everything I can today. I'm doing everything that's under my control. And then we'll let the results play out. But I know it's not going to be a one day fix, a one week fix, and oftentimes a one month fix. It's going to be uh, multiple months and sometimes multiple years, depending on what you're working on. But if you don't maintain that sense of urgency now, then you never get there in the future. So I think those were two big kind of takeaways and concepts that came out of today's conversation. And really appreciate you guys listening to the show. Um, like Tom said, we're almost at 100. Most podcasts don't make it to 10. Um, and that's because you guys have been doing a good job spreading the word and, uh, and tuning in. And we really appreciate that. So if you don't mind, go ahead and leave us a review. If you haven't over on iTunes, it means the world to us and it helps spread the word and keep this thing going. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time on Builder Funnel Radio.